Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Sophie and I'm the founder of Agnes London. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make your very own scarf bag just like this one. The other day I was browsing and other stories websites because I was looking for some jumpsuit inspiration and this bag caught my eye and I thought that's crazy that looks ridiculously easy to make and it was £45 so I thought I bet I can make it so much cheaper. I brought these bamboo bag handles online from McCulloch and Wallace they actually have a shop in Soho and I actually get a lot of my supplies from them anyway so that was cool otherwise you could probably find a bag in a charity shop just cut the bag off and use the wooden handles because they're fairly common and then you're going to need a scarf as well I didn't have any square scarves so I just used some fabric that I already had lying around I did take a look on eBay and there were plenty of scarves but because I wanted to keep this as cheap as possible and as sustainable as possible, I used some fabric that I already have. Now let's get into the video. The original scarf bag I saw retailed for £45 and I wanted to try and make it as cheaply as possible. In the end, this bag ended up costing me £6.75 for the bamboo handles. I noticed that the one online also had a zip which seemed like a good idea for extra security. So here's one that I had left over from university. It's just an open-ended zip. So I'm going to use this zip for my bag. I'm not too bothered that it's a different colour as I don't think that you will see it when the bag is done up. I'm going to use two layers of this fabric and put it together to make it a bit thicker and hopefully make the bag a bit sturdier. Although let's face it, it's not exactly going to be a practical bag, more of a statement item. So before I get sewing, I'm going to pin these both together. I'm going to pin the right sides together. You can see that this is the right side because it's a bit shinier than the other side. When we're making things, we call the right side the side that we want to be on the outside. So I'm just going to measure these two squares. So I'm using two squares that are 85 centimetres by 85 centimetres and I'm going to pin them together because this fabric moves a lot. You want to use nice thin dressmaker pins for this so it doesn't snag the fabric. So what I'm going to do now is I'm literally just going to stitch all the way around the square. I am going to leave myself part of it open so when I'm done I can turn it inside out easily and then I'll top stitch that to close it up at the end. I'm also gonna pin the zip in at this point. So I'm pinning the zip in the center of this seam I'm pinning the right side of the zip to the right side of the fabric and I'm trying to put my pins in vertically with the fabric and the seam if possible. This means that when I'm sewing my needle will hopefully jump over the pins and it's less likely to hit a pin. If it does hit a pin then the sewing machine needle will snap and I don't want that. So there you go there is one side of the zip pinned in place and I'm just going to do the same on the other side of the square. Again measuring to make sure that the zip is going in the same place on each side so it matches up and actually I need to make sure that I've matched that I put it in the right way. And you can tell which is the right side of the zip because that's the side that the teeth are more prominent on. As you can see the zip is quite a bit shorter than the actual seam. This is because we want to leave ourselves a nice sort of space in the corners to be able to tie those really lovely knots that you saw um, in the bag. So I've just pinned the zip to one side of the fabric at the moment but when I'm sewing I will be enclosing it in both sides of the fabric. So now let's go and sew it. So 
as you can see, I've sewn the zip in. It's actually quite badly sewn in. I haven't sewn a zip in in ages. So that's what it'll look like from the outside. I'm gonna do the other side first and then I'm gonna sew all of the square together. So I've just moved my needle from the center to the side on my machine so I can get a bit closer to the zip with the needle. Just gonna check that they actually work together before I carry on sewing the whole thing up. Okay, so now let's sew the whole, both the squares together. I'm going to put my needle back to the centre position and then I'm, I'm going to use the measurements on the sewing machine to sew one centimetre. So I'm only going to sew up three sides of my square, then leave one side open so I can come back to that to top stitch. So now that I've sewn up three edges of my square, I'm just going to give it a press with the iron. I'm going to set my iron to a really low temperature because I don't know how this fabric's going to react to heat. So I'm going to start off really low and then if that's not working, I can gradually increase it. And I'll just try on a little corner of the fabric to test it first. I'm going to turn that down to the silk setting. This isn't silk fabric, but I think it will behave like silk and I don't want to melt it. So to begin with, I'm just gonna test the temperature of the iron on a small square of the fabric. What you don't wanna do is get your iron and just plonk it in the middle, the center of your fabric, because if it is too hot and it is gonna melt your fabric, then you'll end up with a big hole in the middle of your fabric. Trust me, I've been there. So I'm gonna press it this way round to begin with, just pressing all my seams, and then I'll turn it the right way round and press it as well. Obviously being careful of the zip also, because if it's a plastic zip, you don't want to melt that either. But this temperature seems like a good temperature. So now I have this edge that I left open, so I can literally just turn my fabric through the right way round. Oh, it's really static. That's fun. And now I'm just going to press these seams the right way around because I'm going to top stitch them in a minute which isn't really necessary I just thought it would look better and the bag would look more finished so I could have just hemmed this piece of fabric rather than sewing two together for the final edge that I left open I'm just going to press it so both sides are tucked over so when I come to top stitch it it's much easier because it's pressed as though I'd just stitched it. So now I have ironed my fabric I'm going to top stitch all the way around the square about half a centimetre in from the edge on the right side so the side that I want to be facing the outside and to do this I'm going to make my stitch length a little bit longer
that is done. That is all top stitched. All the edges are finished and closed up. Now my scarf is ready and made. I'm gonna do the final step, which is the easiest step, and I'm gonna attach the bamboo handles. So I've got my zip, both my zip edges together, and then I'm gonna tie these two sides to each hoop. So starting off with this corner, literally just a big old knot. It's really satisfying how easy this bag is to make. It's gonna be such a cute bag to go with summer dresses and would make like a really nice bag for a wedding or sort of stuff like that. So hopefully I will be able to get out before summer's over and show off my new bag. That's one side done. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. So you don't have to do any of the hemming of the fabric or adding a zip. You could just go to a charity shop and see if you can find an old bag that has round handles like this. Just cut the rest of the bag off so you've got the handles. Then you could use an old square scarf that has already been hemmed. So, starting to look like a bag. And then let's check if I can actually do my zip up. Okay, so no, probably should have used a shorter zip for this. In fact, maybe it'd be easier if I do the zip up before tying the bag up. So there we have it, our very own scarf bag. So now I'm just readjusting to make it look pretty. And then you can just unzip it, pop stuff in it, and you're good to go. And yes, probably just gonna sort that bit out so I don't have that big hole. But that side looks all good. So you can make it bigger or smaller as you like. And then one final thing that I probably will do is just hand stitch the knots just really roughly because the other day when I tried this out, um, the knot came undone and my phone fell out. There you have it, 45 pound bag for seven pounds. And don't forget to tag me if you do try this at home. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe. You can follow me at Agnes London on Instagram. I upload videos to my Instagram as well. And I'm gonna be uploading one video a week on sewing, sustainable living, DIY, week in the life of a founder. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss another video from me. Thanks for watching.